Ha! Gotcha! I bet you thought the next installment of this series would be Henry. Well, you thought wrong. Ha ha! I sure got you! No, but seriously, there's not much to say about some of the engines in my collection like Henry. He's just a Black 5 painted green. Not much of a story there in terms of customization. I thought about maybe compiling the simpler customs like Henry, Toby, Oliver into one video or something, but we'll see. You guys tell me if that's something you want. But enough about that. You clicked on this to see Gordon. Okay, let me explain Audrey's backstory for Gordon. The official canon of Gordon's origins is that he was the experimental prototype for the LNER A1 class, built in 1921 at Doncaster with some significant differences from the final design, including a sloped footplate instead of a stepped one. In 1923, the LNER sold Gordon to the Northwestern Railway, where he became the railway's premier express locomotive, complete with a Fowler tender. In 1939, Gordon was sent away to crew where he was rebuilt into a two-cylinder locomotive with his own unique valve gear. Once again, as always, I take some issue with this explanation. I don't have any issue with Gordon being built by Gresley, not remotely. That aspect of his backstory is very solidified in the stories and I don't want to change that canon in my interpretation. However, I don't like the idea of Gordon having some weird hybrid rebuild and being this bizarre prototype just to justify his appearance in the illustrations. For someone who explicitly said the illustrations are inaccurate and not to be taken literally, it seems contradictory that Audrey went so hard to explain why Gordon's footplate looks the way it does in the illustrations. I know this comes down to that this is one of those obscure details Audrey addressed to kids who wrote in asking about Gordon before he created the official lore book, and he didn't want to change something he had already stated as fact in the past. But still, it's just a bit too far-fetched for my liking. As far as I care, Gordon's just straight up an A1. First one built, sure, whatever, that's fine, but I wanted him to have the actual outline of an A1 in how I portrayed him. Same footplate design and all. I originally wanted to use a Hornby Great Northern for Gordon, as that is an original condition A1 before the A3 rebuilds. But as finding one for a decent price proved difficult, I had to seek out other options. I found a Hornby Lattice, which is an A3 with the original dome shape. And this got me thinking about my personal AU for Gordon. So as far as alternate takes go, Here's my headcanon for my Gordon. His origins are basically the same, an A1 built for the LNER and sold to the Northwestern in the early 20s. But I like to think at some point in the 40s, around the same time the other A1s were rebuilt into A3s, Gordon would have received the same upgrades. No stupid rebuild into a two-cylinder loco at crew crap. Sorry, Railway Series purists. Gordon was sent to Doncaster to be rebuilt into an A3, where he reunited with some of his brothers, including ones that were built after he left for Sodor. He returned to Sodor with a superheated smoke box and a new tender, the LNER Group Standard Six-Wheeled Tender. He wouldn't need a corridor one for his short trips across Sodor. Again, none of that Fowler tender nonsense. I'm just not a fan of how that dinky thing looks behind an A3 body. As the time period of my models are all in preservation era, I wanted to model Gordon in what would be his later condition. So now let's get into the specifics of actually building the thing. The body is a Hornby lattice with no alterations. The tender is from an old busted Bachman B1 I got from Hatton's. I fastened a toothpick under the tender with super glue so that it can couple into the body tender's coupling. Thankfully, there were no crappy wires to be dealt with here like with Edward. Gordon can happily run with his body separate from the tender. I really wish Hornby would go back to making their tenders uncouplable like this. I really hate those stupid wires. The painting process was the exact same as Thomas and Edward. Primer, then several coats of sapphire blue. Then a brick red for the footplate, a cleanup with black, and silver sharpie for the fittings. 
Lining was a bitch for Gordon. As Gordon is the Northwestern's premier express locomotive, I wanted to give him a bit more pizzazz than the others. So I went all out and lined out the entirety of his frames to make him look more ornate. As he's the main engine all passengers would be seeing, it only makes sense that he should look the grandest of them all, right? The last touch was his nameplate. None of my Northwestern engines have nameplates, but I wanted Gordon to be special. As an A3, he deserved one. So what I did was take measurements of the splasher with a ruler, then found a Flying Scotsman nameplate side shot on Google, scaled it to the correct dimensions in Illustrator, and then drew a Gordon nameplate on top of it. I printed it out at 100% scale, cut it out with an X-Acto knife, and voila, a Gordon nameplate. I would like to replace it with an actual 3D brass one someday, but until then, this will do just fine. Now, Gordon is not 100% finished. I still have to make one change to the model before I can call it done. And can you guess what it is? Yep, the buffers. Gordon has strange rectangle buffers in the books and oval ones in the show. What I wanted to do was get a set of Bachman LMS Princess sprung ones from Hatton's, but I missed my window on that as Hornby and Bachman split ways last year so I just haven't gotten myself a set yet. And the more I sit on it, the more I kind of don't want my Gordon to have them. As this is already a pretty liberal alternate take on Gordon as is, I figured he might as well have round ones like everyone else. Surely Doncaster wouldn't have rebuilt him and left him with weird LMS style buffers on him, right? So that's it for Gordon. One of my favorite models for sure. I can't wait till I have a full circuit layout again so I can give this guy a solid run-in. I can just tell he's aching to stretch his wheels. So that's it for this installment of Tug's Trains. I decided I'm not going to do the characters in order because I think it's more fun to change it up as I go along. So who would you all like to see next? Maybe James? Or Percy? Or maybe one of the more obscure ones like Spencer? I'm open to any and all suggestions please let me know in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.